Candace from Happy Catastrophe here with Guritama Go Away. And he's promised to be nice while we go through what is probably my favorite video to watch of yours. And that is finished pages for this month, which is March 2024. So let's look and see how I did overall in the month. Um, here is where she's going to talk nonstop. Um, this is March. Now, as you know, uh, if you've watched me at all, my goal is always 10 pages. Hold on one sec. My dog is having issues getting to his bed around all of my coloring books. <laughs> my dog Jack likes to, I'm sitting at the coffee table. My dog Jack likes to be behind me on the couch, but I'm surrounded in, in uh, books and things uh, getting ready for this video and he couldn't get to me. I have successfully made myself an island amongst all of my coloring books. My dream has come true. All right, so March... I actually did 11, and the reason this is coming out a few days late was because I was scrambling to finish one. I I colored the same amount I always color every night and often on my weekends, but for some reason at the end of March, and I tend to do this every month as I start a bunch of pages and they all come together at the end, um, I didn't have enough time. I ran out of month, even though this month is a long month. So I could not get all the little pages that I had started done. And I just was surrounded by all this wonderful artwork from all these wonderful artists. And they were all just had a little bit left to do on them. So I decided that I needed to just, I didn't want to have that many whips going into April. Plus it would look like I did a lot more in April than I did since the bulk of all those pages was done in March. So I finished one because I really wanted to show you this artist. Uh, long story short, yes, please get to the point. Uh, I'm going to just show you what I've done in March, including that little one I just finished, and that'll be 11 pages, so I'm really excited. I only worked in one untouched book, and that might even be an iffy, and I'll show you why. I don't think I can even really count that. But this final one that I did was a new to me artist, which I'm really excited about. I didn't purchase any books this month, but I was gifted one. Yes, your girl got a happy mail. <laughs> I was just shocked, absolutely blown away. I've, it's only happened to me a couple of times. And I, I actually cried a little bit in the post office parking lot. <laughs> It is such a beautiful book. Um, I'm working on a, I've talked to the person who gave it to me. I'm working on a page now and I'll be showing it in an upcoming video just as soon as I finish that page. Then um, I didn't de-stash any either. So my total books went up by one because of the gift at 140 and my untouched is still at 35. Yeah, we're not going to count that one. I don't think I did. It doesn't really count and I'll tell you why. And so I have 25% of my books are still untouched. Now my goal by the end of this year is to have that down to as close to zero as I can make it. And if it's not zero, then I need to look at those books and find out why I'm not touching them. And maybe they need to be rehomed. Um, now I did four of my 11 were color by numbers. I did a lot of color by numbers. Uh, I was just in that kind of mood this month. And maybe that's why I didn't do as many because they actually take me longer. The, those Hatchet Hero color by numbers are tough and they take me longer than a regular coloring page. And maybe that's why. I did do five buddy colors, which was fun. Um, these are all some of the buddy colors I participated in. These were some of the pages I, I wrote that in a glittery pen that I wanted to do. And it looks like I did several of them. So that's great. So let's get on with the pages. So the very first page I did for this month of spring, March, was a spooky page. <laughs> I was so excited to do this, buddy. I love to color in these Mythagorias. I'm looking to do another one on a vengeful forest for April. So if anybody's interested in coloring in that book, um, get a hold of me. I'll be doing an April plans soon, and we're going to look and pick a page out of Vengeful Forest because I haven't, uh, I give them all equal love. I love them all equally. But this one is probably the one I've colored the most in. And um, this was a buddy with Jen Coloring 1975 on Instagram. And Jen and I do have done a few buddies together. 
and we um, are working together on a few different projects and I just love her dearly. So she picked out the page this time. We kind of go back and forth. And what we did was this page. Now this, um, I started this in February, at the end of February because I was just so excited to get started on it. Uh, we thought we would do it for, well, you know, because February is the month of love. So there you go. Um, I used alcohol markers for everything except what's glittery. In Mythographics and Mythagorias, I really get to use my favorite medium, which is alcohol markers. And I don't have to, I don't feel the need to touch it up with pencils usually. Sometimes I find in other books I do, but in this one I don't. I like the way the pens lay down and um, I can do shading with them. So all of it is Copics mostly, alcoholic markers, whatever. I have a few alcoholic markers. Yeah, they're drunk. Um, I have a few alcohol markers, odds and ends, other than Copics, but it's mostly Copics. The glittery stuff is a King Art glitter gel pens. There's some dark blues and blacks in there. Now I knew I wanted the roses black. And so I started coloring in black and then I'm like, well, now I've colored myself into a corner. <laughs> what, what do I do with, how do I put accents? How do I make them not look like black blobs? So I decided to use this really bright dark blue and um, it's rather subtle. <laughs> the roses I kind of wanted to blend in the background. I kind of wanted everything to blend in the background except for everything to just be sort of the background for these guys. Um, the middle rose was one that the first one I did and I did it in almost all like I did a black and a dark blue and it you couldn't see the difference so I went over the blue with this glitter pen and it's more glittery where the others don't have glitter but I kind of like that because it's in between them the crows are the same black and blue although the blue here is not as bright as the blue I used in the roses but it's the same sort of idea with the glitter pen uh, these, what look like hyacinths, I think. Hyacinths. It doesn't seem right. Seems like it might be a different flower. I kept with the blue. I really wanted these cool. I, I got all this done. And then I did the two here. And I tried not to make the eye too gory, but, you know, it is an eyeball with some goop there, so it's a little gory. But then I was kind of stuck on the background. I didn't know what to do. And I decided I wanted to make it this pink. When I got, once I got done and stood back and looked at it, I wasn't sure it worked. Um, but I decided that I liked everything else so much, I just called it good. I could have done more. I could have gone over the lines with stuff, with acrylic markers or whatever. But I decided that I just liked the rest of it so much that I would just leave the background as is. I didn't mind that it was flat and unshaded. It's not important. What's important is the loving couple in the middle there. And um, that was the important part. So what do you think about that? It's, it's a little odd with that bright pink background um, and all of this you know, stuff that sort of runs together. But I, I don't know, it grew on me. The more I looked at it, the more I liked it. And then eventually I just loved it. So, um, I sent mine first to Jen, and she was just finishing up hers, and then she came back with this one. And we both had the dark rose idea. We both had this, you know, this this wasn't going to be your traditional, you know, red rose or white rose. I really love it. I think the two work well side by side even, and I absolutely love what she did. We had so much fun doing this, and I'm glad she picked this picture out because it is one I've had my eye on in this book. I just hadn't done it yet. So now it's done, and I got to do it with a good friend, and so that's just win-win. Um, if you are new and you've never done a buddy color with somebody, you might be surprised at how fun it is and how um, what a positive experience it is. And um, if you're scared to reach out, don't be, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Jen, reach out to anybody. I don't know anybody who would say no, <laughs> unless they have already too many pages picked out or too many buddies for the month. I limit myself to five. Um, you know, my goal is 10 pages. So if I did 10 and five of those were buddies, that's, you know, half of my coloring right there. So I limit it to that so that I definitely have enough time on my hands to do other pages that might just pop up and 
scream at me during the month. But yeah, so that was my coloring with Jen and I just loved it. Jen, let's do another one soon. And uh, thank you so much for coloring with me in this amazing book by Fabian Atanasio, Darkest Desires. All right, I'll show you what I did next. All right, then I got to get into this book. Now, uh, these circularism art books are my favorite that Eclipse AJ Quinnell does. I absolutely love them. They're a little <laughs> on the spendy side, aren't they? I think they're like $13, $14. So I don't have a lot. Um, one of my other happy mail was someone sent me Chonk, which I love, and I started doing a page for this month for, in Chonk. But I had sort of forgotten that I had this Easter one. Um, I don't celebrate Easter, but I love all the springtime Easter images, and the ones in here are great. So the first one I did, this is one I did last year, and this is where I did it in acrylic paint pen. And that's when I found out that I really love doing these in acrylic paint pen. So I did, yeah, I think I did this one last year as well. So this was last year as well too. Aren't these fun? This is the premium paper. It's a little shiny. I like it better than the, I pay, I would rather get the premium paper than not. The other paper is too much like newspaper and absorbs the pens and it, the pen doesn't stand on top of it like this. Um, but this is an alcohol. This is more, uh, this is probably water-based marker, actually. So you can see the numbers if you look closely in these. Um, I think the only thing that really uh, covers the numbers up is acrylic paint bin, which is what I did here. So this was the first one I did this month. And I'm trying to keep the glare out. There you go. And just, and, and then this one, this was, I opened this book up right after I got my Thule art paint pens. Um, there, and the, the set I, I can only afford one set. So on Disney Meg's recommendation, I got the Earth Tone set and love it. So these are the sorts of colors that are in the Earth Tone set. So see, there are some, you know, brighter ones, but they're not all dull, but they are definitely muted. And isn't that fun? Now, on these, you know, the, there's not many colors. Those are the colors. You get to interpret it as you want to. That's another thing I like. I found that, the like, the Hatchet Hero, when they have, like, a, just a color, I've been trying to match that ex they, where they show the color in a box. I then have to go through everything and try to figure out how to make exactly that shade because that's how I am. But if it just says yellow, well, I can go with any yellow I want. So you could have done this in brights. You could do this in pastels. You could do this in you know, really muted. Um, I just chose this one set and used the pens that were in it. Yeah. I think I've got, oh yeah. This here is, it's a, um, it looks like it's the Hemi acrylic gouache. Where it's shiny like that. It might, it's either the Hemi acrylic gouache or the Arteza acrylic gouache. Gua I mean, acrylic, hemi metallic gouache, or the Arteza Artalic gouache. The Arteza gouache is really nice, but it comes in all these little tubes, and so I find I don't open it. I like to actually just see the colors and dip my pen, paint, my paintbrush in it. If it's in a bunch of little tubes, I just can't be bothered. But it might be that. I didn't write it down. Anyway, so then I like this so much that I just flipped the page and did the next one. So again, now you can see those muted earth tones. I did a lot more of the, and this one had a lot of more browns and stuff, browns and greens and oranges. It was more those kinds of colors. Same paint pens, but because this page used different colors, it looks a little different. Now there's no, I put no shiny stuff in this one. I wanted to keep this one kind of muted like this. I wanted to see what it would look like in earth tones. And I really like it. <laughs> see, aren't these fun? His, I like these that have the, that have some black in the background to them. I think they make really fun pictures to look at at the end of the day. And again, they're just so fun. Um, you just go dot, Dot, dot. And now what makes it what might be even more fun is some people use dotting tools. These, because in this particular book, the circles are different sizes. Um, I decided that, that I do have some dotting type tools, but I decided I, that would be too much bother. So because they're different, 
different sizes. So I just use a paint pen and you kind of get into the rhythm of like in the middle circle, in the middle circle, in the middle circle. And it's so meditative. It's just wonderful. I, I absolutely love these brainless type pages. I just, and I started on a third, but I did not finish it. And um, so that's my whip right now, working on a squirrel. Yeah, I don't find that it needs to be Easter for these because they're just really fun. It's about the process for me in these in these circulism books. And I mean, they're great. Like that doesn't have to be Easter. Just adorable, right? Oof, I bet that's pretty. What are the colors? Let's see, yellows, greens, oranges, reds, pinks, and blues. That'll be really neat, kind of rainbow looking, I hope. This is making me want to, I told myself I was going to go to bed at a decent time. So after I get done filming this, I was going to head to bed. But oh my gosh, that's tempting, isn't it? And this is how my nights turn into days. <laughs> I guess I don't need a bookmark in there for this. But anyway, that's Circulism, Art Books, Color by Number, the Easter book by Eclipse. I get all of these off of Amazon. All right, let's see what I did next. So last month I gave a ton of love to my Looney Tunes Hatchet Heroes, and um, of which I have, uh, I have both of the Looney Tunes one and two, and then I have Mickey and Co. Those are those that I have. Then I have this Le Grand Classique. Um, I watched a lot of flip throughs of these because I could only afford one at the time, and I really loved the pages in this one. This was the newest one at the time, so I purchased it. Now. I haven't been tempted to buy another one since until the brand new one that just came out this month, which is uh, Fairy Tales. And Tammy Colors 2 got it and did a flip through of it. And those pages are amazeballs. And I really need that book in my life. So that is going to be probably be happening this week because I just get, I get paid tomorrow. So I'm really excited. Um, so Le Grand Classique uh, Tomb 10 and in this one, now I think I showed you this last week, um, and you all told me that was Hades. Well, I actually finished it, um, had been working on it, finished it. I got it blacked off here um, with black acrylic paint. Uh, I use mostly paint pens except when you get into big places like this and actually that's also paint pen but you can see it's streaky because it's the Arteza acrylic paint pens and they're very streaky and not opaque um, where it's opaque it's uh, probably a Thule art and so then I went to this one so I got the haze done and this one I, what I think is cool is they kind of go together in colors now they're not the same movie right like, I don't know what movie this guy's from either. So let me know in the comments what movie this is from. Um, I've obviously, this is Hercules, right? Now, I've seen Hercules, but it was a long time ago. And I remember I loved it. I don't know who this guy is. But um, they looked very, they have a similar, kind of similar color palette. So I think they work really well together. And then when I'm done, when I do, when I, I uh, do two pages, uh, before I complete the edges because um, most of the time because usually I do it the same color so that way it looks like that it looks like a finished page and that way it also covers because I down here I have all kinds of like trying to match the colors and I mean it's a mess down here this is just apple barrel pavement matte black sometimes I like to use a shinier black but most of the time I use that matte black so it doesn't compete with the page yeah, so this is a lot of Thule art. Now, see where it's streaky right there? That's Arteza. Where it's not streaky, that's Thule art. See, Thule art. Thule art. The gray is Arteza. Now, this black is um, a Chinese knockoff acrylic paint. I don't think it even has a name. They're very, very old. And uh, only a few of them still have paint still left in them. And they, but the reason I like to use them now and then when I can is they have a great big nib on them. So they cover big spaces like this. And they come out really juicy when they have paint. So it worked pretty good. Um, the, I don't know why I didn't just use acrylic paint from a bottle and a brush, but I was just probably being lazy and had the other pen close by. Um, 
But yeah, this is Thule Art, see, not streaky. Good stuff, streaky, these are not Thule Arts. Um, one thing is, is I found, I like the Thule, I got this, the uh, the smallest nib in the Thule Art, um, but I think I am gonna go to a bigger nib. Now the smallest nib's nice for really tiny spots, but I don't have a problem getting in tiny spots with round nibs, I just use it, I just get really delicate. And if it's that, if it's that difficult, I'll use a different pen. But I find that their their smallest nibs. Now I know some people really like those small nibs, but they're really sharp and pointy, and they kind of leave marks, or they they're hard to get a smooth coverage. I have found so I think they'd be great for things like George Tufexis, but something like this, I want a bigger nib. So I think my next purchase, I'm, I'm going to get the. I think the box is called the Elementals, and it's um, it's like just primary colors and such. So I think I'm gonna get the bigger nibs on those because I mostly just use them in these books. But yeah, those are the two pages. Finished, finally finished this one and then did this one in March. And I think they look really good together. What's next? Did I start up next one? No, I haven't. Oh, these are the guys from um, Inside Out. Can you tell? Can you see? There's Joy and there's sadness and this is Jafar yeah and Iago so these two will be fun to do and they're both horizontal so that'll be interesting although I found with these even though the picture's horizontal the numbers are still vertical you don't turn the book to do the page which is interesting um, the numbers and colors are down here and the numbers are still horizontal see can you see there you go you can read the numbers but you don't turn the page. So you're actually coloring on the page like this. Um, you turn the page to look at it when you're done, I guess. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. You don't have to turn the book. I think that's very clever. Anyway, that's Le Grand Classique, Tomb 10. It's Hatchet Heroes. If you're interested in these sorts of books, there's a website called lyrica.com, L-I-R-E-K-A.com. And it's a French site. You can... Um, Coloring book in France, French is this, Coloriage. So if if you're new there for, it's your first time there and you don't already have like a history or a browser history or cookies haven't identified you, look up Coloriage and that's how you'll find the coloring books. And this one's Coloriage Mystère, which is color by numbers because we don't know what it's going to be. And uh, shipping is free to the United States and free to quite a few countries. So hopefully it's free to yours. All right, let's see what I did next. Okay, then um, that was the end of my color by numbers. So now, so I just did those four. I just got really excited about it. Uh, well, six, I guess, with Eclipse. Um, and then I did uh, a buddy with Disney Megs. And we did uh, something out of Matchstick Mouse. I'm trying to get the glare out of your eyes. A springtime coloring book by Morgan O'Brien. And um, if you're new... You need to check out Morgan O'Brien. He's fantastic. You can get almost, you can get a lot of his books, most of them, I think, downloadable off of his Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I. If you go to his uh, Instagram or you look him up through a web browser, you'll find his shop. And you'll go to his shop and you can download them. You can buy all of the books off, all of the books that aren't, that are his original artwork off of Amazon. You can download some of his books that are based on like Star Wars or based on um, Animal Crossing, those that he can't really sell. Um, but he has full books like that. You can download them for free. Um, just please do leave him a donation because he works hard on this stuff. So there's a place where you can donate money. for. But he has quite a bit of free downloadable stuff. I've downloaded free, a lot, quite a few free PDF pages. But throw him a couple bucks or something for that. And then, uh, but this was purchased off of Amazon last year. And Disney and I have done a couple of these, I think. And here's the one I we did. And this was, I just thought this was an amazing picture. She selected a few pictures and we both thought this one was fantastic. I mean, look how happy that mouse is. She is just dancing in the flowers. <laughs> now, I don't know what I did with, I tried to do something different. Do I have another page done in here? Yeah, see, that's usually how I do her. Um, alcohol markers and just some shading and I leave everything. I tried to do something different and because I had just gotten those Tuli Art paint bins and I wanted to use them on everything. 
So I tried to do her fur with paint pens. Um, I don't like it very well. Uh, I'm not as crazy about it. I don't think I'll outline it anymore like that. I liked it better done like, well, that's basically no shading whatsoever, but I like it better done like that. But I absolutely love the flowers and the trees and the sky. Now, all of these pink, ones I colored pink were there. The white I added because I just felt she needed more flowers to dance in. <laughs> I do like how the flowers turned out, and I think that's where I got the idea for covering up the lines with uh, acrylic paint pens, because you know a lot of us do that. We'll take a paint pen and color, cover up the lines and make it look more watercolory, but I don't like the way it worked on her. I think it's the colors I used. Plus, I didn't actually cover up the lines. I just made the lines a different color. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing with her. But look at her little butt. It's so cute. Anyway, um, she is dancing with abandon. I think that could definitely be called dancing with abandon. So let's look at what Disney Megs did. And of course, she did a gorgeous job. I don't know how she cranks out the pages she cranks out every month because she doesn't you know, phone it in on any of them. They all look like this. They all look like there's effort put into them. You know, I call, I told her once that I, I don't know how she does so many buddy colors and so many project books. If you watch her channel, which I highly recommend you do, she's um, she puts out like four or five videos a week and she has all kinds of projects going on, all kinds of hashtags. I mean, I don't know how she does it. And she responded that, yeah, she's crazy. <laughs> I don't, I don't disagree. <laughs> she is one of the most active color tubers there are. She pours her heart and soul in it. So please go check her out. Um, I will definitely put her channel here um, eventually, as soon as we get done looking at her page. And also I will um, link her in, I have yet to link anything, but I'm pretty sure I have the ability to link something in my description. So I'll put her down there, but go check her out. See all of her completed pages. And here is her, her handle for YouTube. And Megan, thank you so much for doing this. Um, we're doing another buddy color this month in April. We just like coloring together, it's a lot of fun. So that was Morgan O'Brien's springtime coloring book. All right, I've got more. Okay, in this precious, precious book, I had no idea how much I would love Hannah Carlson. I mean, I looking at her style, it wasn't for me. Although I did really appreciate the effort that's gone into these books. They're hardback. The paper is really good. Uh, but I was just like, I don't get it. And I, I liked her animals, but I wasn't crazy about her people. But then I started seeing people coloring them, as you do. And they do such an amazing job. So when Doodle Robot decided uh, we had a buddy color group with a bunch of us, we're doing another book. And when she decided, yeah, we're kind of done with that book. Let's pick another one. Someone mentioned Hannah Carlson. I had this book coming and it's the only one I had of hers. And so we chose Daydreams. And um, if you saw, we did uh, the very first page we did was in we do it every other month so if it was march it had been in january we did this page and um a lot of you got to see many 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 pages of this because it's a large group and if you're interested in joining this we do a page every other month and we pick a page and uh have a lot of fun in that is it's an instagram buddy group it's an instagram chat so yeah hit up doodle robot Here's her handle while I find the page we did. Oh, that one. So <laughs> what we did was this page. But what I have found in this book is that in the pages, well, I just turned to one that really isn't, but often there will be, well, I guess it isn't as often as I thought, but often this side matches this side. So some of the same foliage as in here is in here. And so I've seen that with a, a bit of, of Hannah Carl's on is that the two pages, like she had the wings that these bees had 
and I just thought, you know what? It needs to be done together. So first I did this one. And I, I once again, <laughs> I'm trying really hard with those expensive Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. And I tell ya, I was having buyer's remorse <laughs> by this time, because that's, I cannot get them by coloring. I think watching Shell's coloring journey and other people who do it well, you have to put a lot of layers on for them to add water and have it be opaque. Otherwise the pigment just sort of runs around and I can't color and plus, they're, although they're the color of polychromos, they're made by Faber-Castell, they're the same colors. They're not the same pencil, which, duh, polychromos are oil, past, are oil pencils, and Albrecht Durer's are watercolor, so they're not going to be oil. Um, so you have to push a little bit, like a Prisma. They're not effortless coloring like a poly is. And I can't do that. I've got so much arthritis, I can't do it. So I find them uncomfortable to use. So I was just really frustrated with them, but then I discovered... That if I use them like I use Tim Holtz Distress Pencils, watercolor pencils, if I sharpen them and then the shavings that fall off are pure pigment, so I get that wet and I use it like watercolor. So that's what I'm doing. I don't use the pencils to paper anymore. I've given up. But what happens is um, I love it. It makes a really nice wash. It makes for, it can be as opaque as you want it to be. I get to use those gorgeous bright colors that they have. I love the colors in them because I absolutely love polychromos. So, and I, when I purchased them, I had a gift. It was gift money and I could either get the polychromos or the Albert Duros and I wish I would have gotten the polychromos. But I got the Albert Durs and they're the same colors and although they're not at all the same pencil because they are watercolor and soft, not hard like the polychromos, I've decided that I have to make them work. And since they are the same colors, I had to figure it out. So I spent a month and a half using them on most of the pages I work on and finally figured it out <laughs> that I just have to use them like I figured out with the Distress watercolor. Sharpen them and then use the shavings as watercolor. And I actually really, really like it. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun to do it that way. I've also found that it absolutely saves your pencil. Because if you're using the pencil like this, it gets dull, you sharpen it, you use it some more. What are you doing with those shavings? You're just ditching them. That's watercolor. These things are too expensive. So these pencils are going to last forever, the way I'm doing, using them. Now the wings, I used Faber-Castell Metallic colored pencils. Now, those are not great pencils. They're their own set. I don't recommend them, but I have them, so I used them. I didn't think the colors worked with the rest of the page, but I was like, it's what I'm going with. So then, of course, I had to do them over here. Now, the reason <laughs> I did these two, um, because I could have not done it. I didn't do it in the other one, but between doing this page, between doing this page, and this page, this, this page, I had watched a video on someone who said, while you've got a book open, while you have supplies open, why don't you do both pages? And because I was using a water medium and I had to wait for it to dry, it makes so much sense then to bounce over here and do this. Now, I probably would do that if I was using a medium that I didn't have to wait dry. I probably would just like get into the page and just go for it and not want to lift my head for days. But I'm super impatient, so if I don't have something else to work on, I will continue to try to work that wet spot, and I've ruined many a page that way. So it didn't even crinkle that bad. So I just, I would do something, it would be wet, or I wouldn't know what to do next. I'd bounce over here. And that way, the way this person explained it is, you're getting two pages done in about the time it would take to do a page and a half. You already have the supplies out. It's one time getting the supplies out. It's one time cleaning them and putting them away. So that saves a lot of time. You don't end up with this whip that's gone on for a while, or you want to come back and do this page, but now you can't really match the colors, so the colors match. But if you don't want them to match, just use the same mediums, but in different ratios. And it'll look like a different picture. So, But I did do this the exact same way. Now, one thing is there was, 
I did the background here first. I did the background here last, and I couldn't remember what pencil I used, so I'm not exactly sure they're the same yellow. They might be, but they're close enough. Um, but I did the exact same thing. The only other thing this has other than the Albert Durs is this is that technique I love to do with acrylic paint where you just take a big old brush like, kind of like this, and you put, you put on your palette, you put like black and red stripe, and then right next to each other, and then you just run this through it, so half of it's black and half of it's red, and then you just go whoop, and then you kind of wipe off your brush, and then you run it through again as much as you can, and whoop. The goal is not to mix the black and red on your brush, to have them really in separate sides of the brush. I mean, if you want to do this, and then you want to do this, then maybe you could swoop it twice, and swoop it twice. And that's like no-brainer hair texture. Like, there's nothing else you have to do other than that. It takes you about five minutes to finish hairdo, and you're done. So this was really... Um, very dark black and a very dark red. Um, so it's very subtle. You can see it better in person. It's a little bit too, it's got a little bit too much of shine here, I think, for you to really be able to see it. But that's the that's because of the paint I used. But um, I love it. I think it makes, I mean, you could use any two colors. The black and the maroon are tend to be my favorite. Then um, I found that there isn't good, I have yet to find good skin color in the Albrechters or the Polychromos. Um, so I did what I could. <laughs> it's a little strange, but then she's a little strange. And then I added uh, freckles to her. Then all the black, including the freckles, is the black Sakura glaze pens, of which I just used the last of my last one. <sighs> Those things are so expensive. So I've got it on my Amazon wish list, and as soon as I can, I gotta get some more, because those I cannot live without. They're that, you know, that really intense, slightly raised black they're just so amazing so that's what i did so this was for our buddy group and um you're gonna see lots of these pages out there we all did it and you'll so you'll get to see who did it and not everybody in the group did it and there's no pressure you don't have to it's a big group but if you want to join and do a page out of seasons for now we're working on this book eventually we'll change to another book but if you want to work on every other month on a page out of seasons join us check out doodle robot and you can do these lovely pages. There's so many wonderful colorists in there. And you'll get to meet some new friends. Oh, and one thing I forgot to tell you is that I painted this black. Now, this was not the matte black. This is, I found in the bottom of a drawer, like, uh, it was, it's a glossy black by, you know, the woman who does all, she went to jail. <laughs> we know her as uh she's like the you know what i'm talking about she's the one we martha stewart martha stewart uh, yes that was long covid brain at work worked hard there and this was um she has a black that's more satin i was surprised that it even was still good but it worked really well. In fact, it's, I think, a nicer paint than the Apple Barrel. I'm really glad I have it. So I'm going to use it for a few backgrounds. So I that was a labor of love going around some of these things. But um, I just decided it. I liked the black. I wanted it to mirror the black and yellow of the bumble, bumblebees. Okay, well, enough said about this page. I hope you like it. And I have a couple more for you. So quite a few, are, a few of you are starting to get this book. This is Astrology Coloring by Anna Yarin. And um, she is an amazing artist. And the paper is fantastic. And what this book is, is it's got the Chinese zodiac in it. It's got a Native American zodiac in it. It's got uh, the Greek zodiac that we all know. It's got some other random pictures in it. Um, and it's just a fantastic book really fun book to color and J Jody from J.I. Colorist um, and I buddy colored on a page and it's the first time I buddy colored with her so that was so exciting and she back in uh, the season of the Capricorn which I believe is January she was wanting to find a sea goat because that's the original astrological symbol for Capricorn and all she could find were like goats but couldn't find a sea goat and then someone told her that, you know, there's one in this book. 
and she got the book and she got it. And she And I saw in one of her videos, she wanted to color the sea goat. So I reached out to her and said, I've been wanting to color that page in this book too. Because I only had one other page colored in here. So that's what we did. Now the other page I've done in here is, um, look at these pages, by the way. I mean, there's that. That's Aries. Isn't that amazing? Don't you just want to do that right now? And the, the paper is pretty good. It's um, thicker than a mythographic, thinner than a Kirby. It's in between that. Um, Taurus, I really want to do this. I just see him in rainbow colors. There's Gemini. What an interesting take on Gemini. Cancer. This is what I did last year for Leo. This is, believe it or not, all pencils. I had just gotten the Color, the gigantic, like, humongous, biggest set they had. And um, I was really excited about it, so I did this. I'm still really happy about that. Probably will never do a full page in pencils again. Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. Oh, I want to do that one, too. Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius. Isn't that a great Sagittarius? And then Capricorn. So... <laughs> if you've seen Jody's video, her video is already out and um, she uh, talks about our pages and I feel exactly the same way. It was so much fun, but I immediately saw this as a night page and she saw it as a day. So we did this day and night, which was really fun to do it completely differently. So to make this night, I just did these leaves black because you know at night when you're looking through trees and there's like a, a light behind them, everything looks black. So I just made it like a night sky that might be lit up by the moon up here. Now, <laughs> the first thing I did on this entire page was this circle. I don't know why. I think the first thing I did was the tail and then I did this circle. And what I saw her was, I my idea was that she was magical and everything she touched turned to color and I made it gold. I made it like a, this golden yellow. So then I, and then I jumped around. I made her scales and the way I got that texture, and yes, it is bumpy. It is bumpy. Is I took um, acrylic paint pens that had some shine to them. I think they're called, I think they're even listed as metallic, but they're not really that metallic. And then I just dotted so I dotted, oh, it took forever. This is just dots. So I did dots of dark blue and dots of a gray blue and dots of purple. And then I went back and dotted more. And then I let it dry and dotted more. Then I let it dry and dotted more. So it's layers and layers and layers of acrylic dots of shimmery blues and purples. And it made it look like scales, which is what I wanted. I thought that was, I thought that worked. And I was really excited about it. So I did this part of the tail first, and then I went up and did her horns. And of course, this is all alcohol markers, and I loved the way it came out. And everything kind of just evolved from there. Her hair was very subtle pinks and blues, and she was blue. And then all of a sudden, I realized I had created a light source. <laughs> There's light coming down on her, right? Because look at her. She's got light on her horns. I was like, oh, crap. Well... And it looks like moonlight. And as I, so, okay, so I'll put light in the trees. So I did this, of course, gray, because we're looking at it at night. It's kind of grayish. I made it, you know, light in the trees. And the way I do that is just a lighter gray to a darker gray. And I just blend it. They're alcohol markers. Uh, alcohol markers with brush nibs blend easy. If you have bullet nibs, they're not going to blend. It, I don't know how, I've tried and tried. You can blend a little with chisel nibs, but you really need brush nibs to blend the get the kind of blends that I do so that's one of the reasons I love Copics and and then so I put some light source here so everything in the back was darker everything in the front was lighter so really it looked like to me the moon was shining down on her which I loved but then I got to that golden circle and it didn't work Oh, so I sent it to J Jody, and I was like, "What do I do? What do you think about that? Does that look?" And I had done the I had done the lily pads, and I'd start on the water. She's like, "Yeah, that yellow circle looks weird," and I'm like, "It does." So I went. I spent a ton of time on it. I went. I used gouache, which worked, and then I put some shiny stuff on it. It washed away the white gouache and showed the yellow through it. And finally, I just had to stop. Um, it's got some fun glitter on it, but unfortunately the glitter was this water-based glitter and it kind of does, it kind of, 
uh, diluted the white gouache that I'd put on top to cover it because it did, it, I did get it white. So it looked good. It was like a moon. But then I thought, oh, it needs sparkle. <laughs> I put the sparkle on it and the white went away and the yellow showed up. And now I really can't put anything more on top of it because I've got all this stuff on it. So it's a little yellow. So it's, I'm not crazy about that. I really, looking back, wanted it to be the moon now. But um, what I was left with then was the water. And I, so I used alcohol markers and just blendy, 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 blendy to make it light around here, around this reflection. And then to try to continue giving that, that feel, I made everything on the opposite sides, like the fish here is shaded. It's just a darker, I think I even just did like a light gray Copic over everything. Same with that fish. I made this these outer sides of the lily pads darker and the in so kind of you know, but then I was stuck. I didn't do any shading with the flowers. I was fine with the flowers just being sparkly and bright. But then I was stuck with her tail. I mean, I had everything done but the tail. So I sent it to Jody again. I'm like, how do I make the tail look like it's underwater? Because if something is sparkly on top, it's probably not going to be that sparkly under. Or is it? I mean, you can see sparkle to a certain depth, but then it stops getting sparkly because it's dark. So she recommended I do, you know, just darker blues and darker colors and just make it because it is underwater. So that's what I did. Um, I used, I thought maybe uh, it would show, it would shine a little bit. So I used a shinier blue in places where perhaps this light is catching it. I don't know. And then this is so dark, it's almost black. And I liked it, but then I put sparkly stuff on it, and now I think I kind of defeated the purpose. Because look, if you take the sparkle away, it does look like it's underwater. It looks really cool, doesn't it, with that blue lit up. You put sparkle on it, it's like, ah, now I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> but I was getting really excited with the sparkles. So if this wasn't sparkly, I think, and this was white, I think I would like have probably one of the better pictures I've ever done. But if we tilt it like this, we could pretend I didn't put a bunch of sparkle on that tail. Oops, I bumped you. And let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. But then you can't see the sparkle everywhere else, like in her tail. So that was my sea goat. So now let's look at uh, Jody's, which was done, which she made hers a daytime sea goat. And completely different directions she did. And I love the two being the same page. They are so different, and yet they are so wonderful. I mean, look at the color she chose and her tree. Oh, she, yeah, those are a lot of leaves, Jody. I know, <laughs> but at least I did mine just in a black pen. You actually did, you know, shading and beautiful greens. And I just think it's, her page is just so inviting and beautiful and spring summery. Um, I love the colors. I love the way Jody colors. She always has such a, her blending is just fantastic. And yeah, chef's kiss. Just love it, Jody. Thank you so much for doing this buddy with me. It's one of my favorite buddies I've ever done. Um, just because they turned out so different and yet they are definitely the same page and they could just be the same creature just during the night and during the day. And also because we talked a lot throughout the month and bounced things off of each other. And that was a lot of fun. So that really felt like you were in here, sitting in here in my cabin um, with me coloring. And I loved it. So thank you very much, Jody. All right. I have two more. All right. So the next one I did was a buddy color with Disney Mays because she's crazy. And she wanted to do two this month. And we did it in, what book was that? Nice Little Town 4. Now, I have the collection. For some reason, I've got gunk all over this. But I have the collection 4 through 11 uh, in one book. And I have a flip through on my channel of this entire book. It takes over an hour. But it's really cool. You get to see all the books. The only downside is, I love this book. I love it that it's like this. It's huge. Super chunk. Super chunk. Um, I've only done one other page in it, and it's from the, uh, it's here, it's from nine. Uh, I think that's the Atlantis one. Now, the only thing I don't like about having them all together like this is that Tatiana doesn't put what book they're in. So in order for me to figure out where the books start and stop, 
when I do a page, I have to do a lot of research. Now I knew this one was from this book because it's the it's the only one where there's like a bunch of C C C pages. And so all the ones here are under the C. Um, so they're all from nice little town nine. But um, I have to look, I have to do some research. And this was done in a lot of different mediums because it was my first page in here and I was just testing a bunch of stuff out. So Disney Megs, uh, Megan said she wanted to do something at a nice little town four. And of course, I have four through 11. I also, I was buying them, um, like I have 12 and 13 separately. Um, I don't care about the ones before four because they're just the house ones that don't have the mice and I like the mice in them. So I thought this was a really fun way to get all the rest of the books. Um, you do have to be okay with, with you know, coloring a book. It lays fairly flat though. <laughs> I'm not too careful with my black. It lays fairly flat. If you want to, um, it, it does. But some people don't like coloring this way. The paper is pretty much the same. It might be, it's still Amazon paper. It's still Amazon paper. It's not the thirsty, thirsty kind of Amazon paper, but it is Amazon paper. But it just might be a more affordable way to get it all. And I got it off Amazon. So she wanted to do something. She wanted to do this one out of nice little town four. Um, and so we did. Actually, I think she gave me three choices and I chose this one. Again, not very careful with the black. <laughs> we'll just pretend like that's not there. And um, I did all this in alcohol markers. I made it, um, I thought it, I the way I thought of it is he fell asleep fishing and the sun's going down now. So I made like a night sky with a couple different kinds of alcohol marker. And then um, the water... I toyed with making this a daytime thing where the water would be kind of greenish, but I don't know. It just felt kind of nighttime to me. So the water's darker. Um, there's quite a bit of shine in this, but the rest of it is all alcohol marker. I don't think, I think I toyed with the idea of pencil shading, but I didn't do any. I did alcohol marker shading. These pages are not for me to get in with pencils and make make some kind of extreme work of art. I just do um, alcohol markers and then glitter gel pens, some acrylic paint pens, like where it's really opaque. There's the glitter. There's Posca all over the place, white Posca. Um, some of the stuff that is like, uh, like that's a um, glitter glue that's on the dragonfly. Some of this stuff, I have a, do I have it out? No. I have um, glossy accents, and then I have a similar type of glossy accent type thing that is made by Tonic, the same people that make um, stickles. And they have one, too, and I can't remember what it's called right now. It's not. In, oh, wait, it's right here. Hold on. It's right here. Nuvo. It's not by Tonic. It's by Nuvo. So these guys make um, dimensional goop. <laughs> It's a technical word for it. And a lot of them, like you, you put a little dot and the dot stays rounded. So it makes bumps. This one is um, not so thick. This is the clear. But the ones that are colors are for making little dots. This one is just for adding some clear to it. You can make a dot. You need to let it dry for days and not touch it. But I just use it like a glossy accent. And the only reason I'm using it other than glossy accent is because glossy accent is down the hall in my art room. And this is sitting right here in front of me. And I'm lazy. So that's what I did. Um, now this, <laughs> the water looks like it's two different blues. It's one blue. It just was kind of streaky when I put it down. And then I didn't want to go over it again. And then I thought, hey, I'll just put like some um, acrylic paint pen and make it look like you know, waves and stuff and little ripples and, and it'll look like I did it intentionally. So if you do something that, you know, if there's streaks or something, if there's a way for you to make it look like you meant to do it that way, do it. Nobody will know. And then there's glitter all over the place. I made sure that there was, you know, light coming out of the windows. So he just basically fell asleep while fishing. Now, while I was pulling this book out, and getting ready to talk about it, I saw coming across my phone, which is what I'm filming on, I saw um, 
a message from Megan and it said, I finished it. <laughs> so I, I stopped what I was doing, got my phone, looked at it, and she sent me this. And I was flipping blown away, girl. I about fell off my stool here. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it is so good. And I said, how did you do that? How'd you make it? Everything looked like everything. It's so amazing. And she said she thought it might be her Prisma pencils. But I mean, she's selling herself short. That The page is phenomenal. <laughs> and I just had to stare at it for a while. <laughs> and then I told her how weird it was that I was just getting ready to talk about this page. And she sent that. So, wow, Megan. <laughs> so much fun to color with you. Um, especially when you show me up like that. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, here's my streaky fun alcohol ink thing. And I just called it a day. And then she's like, boom, Picasso, Monet type Van Gogh's level artwork. <laughs> it's amazing. So thank you, Megan, um, again, for a wonderful body color. And next month, we're doing something out of Nice Little Town 12, the circus one. So that's an untouched book for me. And I am really excited about that. Okay, I have one more. And here it is. I really like this one. <laughs> I have to say, I'm pretty proud of this one. So um, this is a PDF. And this is by Nansu Lane Art. And I'll put her name here. She's on Etsy. Um, I found her recently. I believe it's a her. I found them recently. Their artwork is everything I love. It's a story, there's a scene, it's detailed, but it's not crazy detail for detail's sake. I like detailed, but I don't like just teeny tiny busy things that I can't even color. I'm not the Mariota type person, I'm not the Zen Doodly type person, I'm not the really crazy detailed. I like, I like stuff that I can really have fun with, but I like lots of stuff in the picture. I don't like big open spaces. This artwork hits me on all points. It's a subject I love. It's a cute, I mean, it's a space that I would like to be in. And in this, this artwork she calls Witch's Bedroom. So I used alcohol marker. And in some places, I actually used my polychromos like up here. I kind of only did it here and here and then down on the couch. I used some polychromos. I started with the couch and I laid down this bright pink and I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. But I kind of like the idea. Like she's a young teenage tween age witch and she'd be into the pinks and the purples. She has pink hair. So I thought that was kind of fun. I made everything else a little more realistic. I'm really proud of the Ouija board. I made it look like wood, like it was wood burned. Um, that was fun. That was a few different alcohol markers and then a um, just a fine liner black pen. There's some glitter strategically placed. I tried to channel my inner coloring with K and not go overboard, but get it in there. So, you know, the flames, the yellow, there's shiny here. There's some of that um, nouveau dimensional glaze there. The rabbit's got shining eyes. There's some all the really bright gold shine and then the shine on top of the lids here, the silver, that is all Kiritake, Gonzai, Tombi, the starry colors, watercolor. This here, of which, oh, I'm getting close to using it up. I'm going to have to get another one. I use it all the time. Um, I had fun making this look like glass so you could see through it. But still, so I, I'm still working with that. But I found that if you just take colors that are lighter than the color that so, you know, so it looks like you're looking through glass at it. That's a best, that's a good way to do it. So again, alcohol marker blending here. Um, there's some shine there on the dried lemons hanging. The, um, the night sky outside is Distress Inks. It is, it was Salty Ocean, um, Uncharted Mariner, Picked Raspberry, and chipped sapphire. I have, um, back in the day, I, I got them this size, but then I found that I don't use them fast enough. So I might as well just get the little size. They're cheaper and you can get them in sets. So I have a mixture of sizes. I have lots and lots of ink. 
And all I did was blend it. Layers and layers of different colors blended for the night sky. And then I was torn because I liked it so much. Oh, I did it first. And then, well, this is alcohol marker, the frame of the, of the, the big round frame. So I was real careful. I put that in first. Then I put the sky and then the black pink, the black pen is over it. Now this is the Sakura glaze pen and this is where it ran out. Ah, so right here where it's not so black, that's just a micron pen going over and over and over it. Oh, it's like, I'm so sad. I love the glaze. And I was using it sparingly because I knew it was going to run out. It was the last one. And then I got that sky done and I loved it so much. And then I was like, do I really want to put stars in it? I was like, yeah, it needs to have stars. So I started using with the white Posca and it was so bright. I'm so used to white Posca kind of changing to the color underneath, but it doesn't on top of these inks. It does on top of alcohol markers, but on top of these inks, it stayed really bright and white. And I'm like, the one time I don't want you just like blah, bright white. So I took, I took my, um, I blent, these I got off Amazon. So I, I was blending it with these. So I took the smallest one that I have there and I just dabbed it on it and kind of smeared every single one of these. Well, that, well after, right after I put them on, I'd put it on and then smear it and then put it on and smear it just to get it so it looked kind of more like glowing stars and not like white dots. <laughs> I don't know. It was good without the stars. I kind of like it with the stars, but it probably would have been fine without the stars. I don't know if the stars were a good addition or not. This got messed up. You can't even tell what it is. It's basically a cloud raining on a little plant. It was absolutely adorable, but I smeared paint, and so you can't tell what it is. Darn it all, because it was one of my favorite things. But yeah, you know that hand. That's got some glitter in it too. So that is, um, oh, and then she's she's in a loft. So these, it took me a long time to figure out what this was. <laughs> a long time. And then I realized, oh, it's it's a ladder leaning up with, oh, I get it, okay. And her wabbit, and she's making magic. I like the way I made um, the parchment look and the books. I really, I mean, I know there's pinks and purples and all kinds, but I kind of went minimal because everything else I kind of wanted to blend in and look very earthy. This reminds me a lot of my cabin. Um, my loft upstairs is a lot like this. It doesn't have a big round window, but it has a square window. <laughs> and this is some place that I would like to live and like to be. I kind of do. But I'd like to be in that room with her, watching her make her magic. Here's some more of that dimensional glossy stuff over here. And a lot of sparkle and shine over there. So... I think, gosh, I, I had a lot of I had a lot of fun this month. This is this one is probably tied with the sea goat to be my favorite pages of the month. Um, and this one might win just because the sea goat's yellow moon bugs me and the way I messed up her tail. But this one just brought me a lot of peace. Every time I looked at this page, I I felt peaceful. Like that scene is so comforting and peaceful that I, I printed it out near Halloween and then I never did it. And so I just decided this was the month I was going to do it. So check out Nansu Lane Art. Here she is again. Check her out on Etsy. She's phenomenal. <clears throat> and I'm going to be um, printing out more of her pages to do. All right. So thank you so much for joining me here today. Gouda Thomas says, go away. And we both appreciate you coming. Um, you're beautiful. And I don't think I thank you enough for supporting my channel and supporting what I do here. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care of you. Bye. <laughs>